So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview, broadcast and recorded live on blogtalkradio.com from the new media and American League Baseball, capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. If you've been watching Hell's Kitchen this season, you had to be scratching your head over the way Chef Lacey managed to avoid elimination week after week. No disrespect to the young lady, but she appeared out of her element from the beginning, both in terms of her cooking skills and her energy level. In a series known for a cruel streak, did the producers keep her in the game for comic relief? Last week, Chef Gordon Ramsay had had enough, and he tossed Lacey before the elimination round. Here's a clip from Lacey's final appearance. window, yes? Hey, madam, VIP, VIP, VIP. Yes, chef, I need three minutes, chef. Three minutes, why? Cut to you. It's, it's all be... there. Every 30 seconds. Madam, where's the chicken? Like, shut up, so maybe I can get you your well-done Wellington. Chicken, lamb, Wellington, let's go. You can do one table, surely. Sure, chef. I'm just going to see what happens. Send it, let's go. Behind you, Robert. Excuse me, Robert. Behind you, chef. Oh, my God. All of you! What is that? Bones thicker than the meat! What is that? I don't know, Chef! It's not good enough! Get out! You're not good enough! Piss off! Joining me this morning is Lacey, the latest contestant to whom Chef Gordon Ramsay has uttered the fateful words, Take off your jacket. Lacey, welcome to Mr. Media. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You, you, uh... Uh, you've certainly got a lot of people's attention. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, in a big way, I think. Yeah. I well, think I'm the most like, talked about contestant this season. <laughs> I think that's probably true. Oh, now, you, yeah. said it, you said at the end of your final interview that your mother warned you not to make enemies on the show. And I, I kind of wondered, now that you've had a chance to reflect and watch Hell's Kitchen, what do you think went wrong for you? Um, I definitely agree that I was in way over my head. Um, but I've, I've watched the show, you know, since it first came on. And usually, you know, the past seasons there's always been, you know, a couple people that don't have any restaurant experience and not really have a cooking background. So I thought, you know, well, at least I have a little bit of cooking background. And, you know, I can learn things pretty quickly. And, you know, I think, I think you know, it wouldn't be too bad. But then I get there and everybody's a chef. And I'm like, oh, boy. I'm in a way over my head, and I think the lack of experience there, uh, you know, the people were kind of looking down on me. And, you, you know, you put eight women in a room together, and the cattiness definitely comes out. So I think it was just unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is, and I don't really regret anything. So Now, your, your fellow chefs, uh, I mean, just – Bluntly honest, they didn't seem to respect you uh, almost from the beginning. And I, I kind of wondered if something, if anything had happened off camera that might better explain your treatment. You know, I think it was just the fact that, you know, they were like, why is she here? She's not on our level. Because, you know, all these people were like chefs and sous chefs and executive chefs and had been doing it for years. And, you know, I think they were just kind of, you know, looking down at me like, oh, great, we have the inexperienced one on our team. But, you know, I mean, if you wanted to succeed as a team, you might have wanted to help me a little more. So I, I didn't understand, you know, and I'll never understand what they were thinking. But, you know, I there's always that one person that everybody doesn't get along with, and it just happened to be me. So mm. what, do, what do you, you do? Uh, How did you manage to stay on there as long as you did? I, I mean, it it seemed like week <laughs> after week. I don't know. <laughs> I, like every week, like literally, like when you see the eliminations, and I was up there, you know, fighting for my life, and you know, you'd see me walk away back into the dorms, and I just have this look on my face. That look was, I can't believe I'm still here. <laughs> it really, I did not expect to make it that far. I think, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, they just kept you on there because everybody hated you, and it makes good TV, and, you know, whatever reason that I didn't go home earlier. You know, because if you look back on all the episodes, I really didn't do that terrible in service till that last night. Hmm. So, you know, I just can't cook meat. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I think you proved that. I was honest. Well, you think that'll be good for you, like at family gatherings in the future, that no one will expect you to cook meat until you'll be off the hook for things? Well, it's actually funny because now I'm a cake decorator, so (laughs) I'm way on the other opposite side of the food spectrum. But uh, so if if Gordon ever decides to open Hell's Bakery, he can give me a call. (laughs) Now, what uh, what was your background going into this? I thought it was interesting that you said that you've watched the show for. For, for you know, for a long time, so you knew what was going on there. What was your background coming into the show? Well, you know, I, I'm a culinary school graduate, um, you know, and I've catched a lot of flack for you know it was community college, but you know we had a good program. Um, I worked on and off in restaurants since I was 15, so I, I knew the food service business. Now I've never worked on a line like that. I can honestly say, I have not. So that was probably my biggest downfall, and I think also. Yeah, you know, that first night where I told the red team, look, guys, I'll be honest, I have no experience, they were kind of like, oh, crap, we have her on our team. And I think that's where it all kind of went downhill. <laughs> and, no, and, you know, like I was always willing to do things, you know, just, guys, what can I do, what can I do? And, like, no one would even talk to me. So I'm just like, you know, when people set you up to fail, ultimately you're probably going to fail. So it was definitely challenging trying to make it day to day but like I said I can't even believe I made it that far so there was a perception I think of you after a while that you were not particularly energetic or eager to take on uh, some of the lesser tasks and your your teammates seemed to uh, look down on you for that I thought is more maybe even more than your lack of cooking experience yeah, you know, when people, you know, especially this past week where Robert's like, hey, can you get my dirty dishes out of the kitchen? It's like, okay, come on, guys. How am I supposed to do well in service if you don't even let me prep anything? Because they, they would always stick. That's why you always see me prepping the dessert station because nobody else wanted to do it. So, oh, we'll give Lacey that job. Or mashed potatoes. So I'm like, great. But, you know. Yep. Are are you? I want to use. I hate to use the word because I'm not someone who likes to be impolite. But are you lazy? Do you think? Do you think that perception is wrong? I'm not. I you know I've had a job since I was 15. I've always worked for a living, made my own money. I've never had anybody you know give me like a free pass to just glide through life. So I think it was unfortunate that you know I'm now lazy, lazy. But I think you know. I had the package to be portrayed as lazy, you know, because I was the overweight girl, I smoke, you know, and I I may not move as fast as everybody else. So I think that, you know, it's very easy to see that I could be lazy and the fact that, you know, I'm just very, you know, when I say I quit, it's not like I really quit. It's like this sucks, you know, (laughs) type of thing, but... Um, it was very easy for them to portray me that way. And that's fine. You know, it doesn't really bother me because I know I'm not. So, you know, think what you want. I don't care. Well, and Lacey, I wanted to ask you this. When you see yourself on TV like this for, I guess, I think you were on there for eight weeks, I want to say. Um, yeah, does it, it was change, a while. <laughs> yeah, does it, does it change the way, you know, you see yourself? Uh, is there anything that you would, you would, you know, want to, change in terms of the way you come across to people as a result of this kind of experience? You know, it definitely was interesting because, you know, your friends aren't going to tell you when you're being whiny. So to yeah. see it, you know, and, you know, I think everybody whines and complains about stuff. I mean, it's human nature, but, you know, to be in that situation, you know, people are going to whine and complain. I just think that, you know, I did it more than everybody, which is why that's what was shown. So it's really like, it's like, wow, you know, I should just lighten up. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, like my my managers at work, like people ask them, oh, is is she really that whiny? And they're like, yeah, she is. I mean, they're more joking around, but it just, it kind of like makes you realize, you know, when you get in a stressful situation, it's kind of chill out. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm doing better with that now. But, uh, but yeah, it's definitely, and then, um, you know, the whole fat issue was hilarious to me with Robert. I still, my mom is so mad. Like if she ever met Robert, she would just punch him in the face. I call, I call him my pot for the pot kettle thing. Uh-huh. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's so funny because I've lost, 
you know, like 25 pounds since the show filmed. And people asking me, you know, oh, did you just, are you working out now because of Robert and what Robert said? I was like, no. I was, I actually lost 15 pounds before I came to, I was in a process of losing weight. And now that that came out, I just thought it was hilarious. And do you, uh, I guess we've got to wrap up, but is there any message you'd like to send to Robert? Uh (laughs) <laughs> probably not that I could say on the radio. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, th- there's no hard feelings there because people are going to think what they want. Honestly, you know, I don't agree with, you know, if he was like really skinny and buff, I could kind of understand more about how he could have a problem with overweight people. But for him to say it kind of shocked me. But so Robert, no hard feelings. We were all in a high stress situation it's all good. I wish him the best. All right. I, I well, wish everybody the best. Well, uh, folks, you can catch uh, Chef Gordon Ramsay and the remaining chefs on the hit reality cooking show, Hell's Kitchen, which has a new episode on Fox every Thursday at 9 p.m. And you can catch episodes you miss or highlights at www.fox.com slash Hell's Kitchen. Lacey, uh, you were very kind uh, uh, to, to handle this. And uh, thanks so much for coming on Mr. Media today. Thank you. All right. Good luck to you. All right. So for more uh, food-related interviews, you can surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com, where you can listen to my earlier conversations with Eliminated Hell's Kitchen chefs, as well as the editors of Cooking Light and Eat.com, as well as uh, food and wine editor Gail Simmons from Top Chef and many more. Please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites, whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, Digital Journal, Podcast Pickle, MySpace, Vox, Folio, Mediafly, High Five, Bebo, Orchid, Podfeed.net, Blueberry, Zencast, Audio, or any of the other million places that we seem to be these days. And subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andoldman.com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andoldman. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with Mr. Media. Thanks for listening, and let's go out listening to one more clip from Lazy Lazy. Madam, look at me. Let's be honest, you're done. You can't waste my time any longer. I agree. Give me a jacket and leave our kitchen. And go in there and say goodbye. Properly. Say it properly. Let's go. Thank you for everything. There's a small violin just for Lacey. That she sucks. Adios, biatch. Piss off. Let's go. Step up again. On the one hand, it's a relief. I can get back to my normal life. Now I get some sleep at night. But, you know, another part of me wishes to stay and learn more and have that chance to win. But, unfortunately, I f***ed up tonight and I can only look back on the positive things, which there weren't many for me. You know, my mom told me when I came here, don't make enemies. And that's the first thing I did and kept doing the whole time I was here. Sorry, Mom, I should have listened.